So we have some fairly interesting news to talk about with regard to the upcoming Pixel 9 line of devices. Now this is going to end with me showing you some benchmark scores. I don't want you to take a whole lot from these benchmark scores because they are quite early and as these systems get more and more optimized, these scores are subject to change. But the first bit of this is uh, it is what it is, and I think it's pretty interesting. So we're going to turn to a, a thread I posted, strangely enough, on threads, where I broke this down. I will put a link in the description to the source of this information. It is a Russian, if I'm not mistaken, website. You can Google Translate it and so forth. But I did you a favor. I kind of broke it down here. So, of course, if you don't know... This is pretty much what the, not pretty much, this is exactly what the Pixel 9 series of phones is going to look like. This website, this, I, I believe, Russian, I'm not exactly sure. This foreign website for me has some sort of a source who is sending them photos of the Pixel 9. Now they have sent some benchmarks and some data about the Tensor G4 with uh, the Antutu benchmark test. And we have... Uh, this table here, I think, will be pretty interesting. So this goes through the Tensor, the G2, the G3, and now the G4. And you can see how things have progressed from the beginning to where we are now. But most importantly, going from the G3 to the G4, we are going from the ARM Cortex-X3 to the X4. That is a faster prime core. There's one of those. We have three of the performance cores going from the 715 to the newer 720. You can see here 3.1 gigahertz. 2.6 gigahertz, so clocked a little bit faster. We'll try to loop back around to that in just a little bit. And then for the efficiency cores, we have four of the A520s. This is, of course, the new version of the A510s. Again, clocked at 1.95 gigahertz. So first bit of good news here is they're using a whole slew of processor cores that are fairly new. I think I wrote this down here. They were all announced in May of 2023. Now, the other thing about this is that, of course, since they're newer, they're all going to be a bit faster. So going from the X3 to the X4, you're looking at a 14% improvement or uplift, I should say, in terms of the performance. You can see here going this direction, higher performance per watt. There's the X4, there's the X3, and so forth and so on. With the AC, 720 and the A520, what we're looking at is more like a 20-ish percent improvement in terms of efficiency. You can see here the, the performance is about 8% better on the 520, 22% less power being expended. The 720 is somewhere in that general ballpark as well. If you draw that line down to where it met the performance, you see what I'm saying. So faster performance, better efficiency, brand new cores. In fact, that X4 Prime core is the same one that's used in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So this is all good news. I do want to point out that we've gone from being 224, so that's eight cores, 224, that's eight cores, 144, that's nine cores, 134, back down to four cores. They keep changing the structure of these things, right? It's kind of strange. So we had two prime cores for a while. We've been one prime core now for a little while, but the performance cores have gone from two to four, and then back down to three. We're splitting the difference. So architecture, the sort of allotment of cores is changing, but overall, I don't think it's make a huge difference. But again, all the cores are newer, all the cores are faster, and that's good news. Now, I mentioned we're going to look at some benchmarks here, and again, these are early. Don't put a whole lot of weight into them, but we are going to talk about them. This was a screenshot from them done with Antutu, and you can see the scores here. What's that? About 1,070,000, 1 1.1 million, 1.1 million. You can see they've got their thing covering up some of the breakdown here, but you can see those numbers there. Now, the next image is my Pixel 8 Pro, and you can see that's a pretty sizable jump. I was just shy of 900,000. I think they normally score about 900,000. I was installing the application, and it got a little bit warm, and then I ran it, so I might have kind of hurt myself a little bit. Notice something else, though, that I don't see a lot of people mentioning. I started at 36.2 degrees Celsius, and I peaked at 40.7. The tensors are always a little bit warm. Let's go back to this here, and this is going to be kind of hard to see. I might actually have to... There we go. So they definitely started colder than me, but this one got up to 36.8 degrees. That's interesting. Did not get quite as hot. Actually, that's, you know, three, almost four degrees cooler. The other two look like about 39 and about 39, and in fact, they hit their peak temperature 
pretty darn quick on these two models. And that is a little bit weird to me. If I come back to my device, you can see we hit 40 about midway through, and then you can see the throttling was occurring and the score came down. So two things to note. One, they got hotter probably quicker than they're going to once they've been properly optimized. And then two, they hit about the same peak regardless. Now this is my Pixel Fold, which is the Tensor G2, and you can see the score is quite a bit lower than even that. And again here, this is more what you'd want to see, that it actually did not hit its peak temperature until the very end. I started a little bit cooler than my Pixel 8 Pro. Again, just kind of look at those temperatures and you can kind of draw some conclusions based off of that. Now remember back to the beginning, I pointed out that these new cores were running at a higher clock speed. You run them harder, you run them at a higher frequency that's going to generate more heat, and that's something that can be improved over time. You can optimize these things in such a way to kind of help reduce that heat a little bit. We may be seeing evidence of these chips not being well optimized yet. They're pushing those frequencies high. Oops, they're hitting really high temperatures early and they're having to sort of throttle themselves down, possibly explaining a little bit of what we're seeing. So again, the scores could go up as these things get improved. To me, what this looks like is a similar jump to what we've gotten in the past. Year over year, these tensors haven't gotten wildly more powerful and I don't think that's gonna happen this time. I do think there's a chance though that it might be a slightly bigger jump than we got when we went from the G2 to the G3. But again, it's not going to be anything absolutely landmark life-changing. The most exciting thing about the Tensor processors in the near future, I'll put a link to this video in the description, is the rumored shift away from Samsung Foundry, completely designing from the ground up a brand new processor, leaving the Exynos lineage behind and going to TSMC for production, rumored to be happening with the Tensor G5 and the Pixel 10. I think that we will finally see a pretty big jump catching up a bit with those Snapdragon processors at that point. The G4 isn't going to be that. It's going to be better, just like the G3 was better, but I don't think it's going to be anything absolutely crazy. Again, guys, I'll put a link to that original article in the description down below. For now, that's kind of what we have. It's a bunch of just raw information, and you have to kind of interpret it from here. I really want to encourage you guys, though, don't freak out too much looking at these benchmarks. Let me actually show you something really quickly. This is my OnePlus Open, and I ran the exact same test on it, just out of curiosity. And we, you can see here, I got 1.4 million there. It's a significantly higher score. And look at the temperature too. Only got up to 32 degrees. Really, really impressive score. But like I've illustrated in tons of videos in the past, if you put this phone right next to this phone, or even this phone, and you just launch apps back and forth, the only time that you actually see a difference in speed is when you're like processing videos, or, or when you are gaming, and it's going to remain true pretty much for the rest of time. And one last thing that I almost forgot to mention, I'm going to tack it on here at the very end of this video, is that this Antutu test doesn't necessarily test for some of the things that Google is going to be trying to do. Here's a bold prediction. The Pixel 9 will have a whole bunch more AI type things going on, and a lot of them are going to be running on the device itself. This benchmark is not going to be able to test for things that have not been released yet. This is not something you're going to see in these results. It's very possible that the Pixel 9 is going to be a big leap in terms of NPU speed. Again, you aren't going to see that right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.